welcome to another Rahela Stapa. Um, hey, look, we're in Bath with the Kabiji. We're on tour um, this year, 2019, and probably for the rest of my life. Uh, go to richtrain.com slash gigs and you can find out if we're coming near to you. Plus, go to rahelastaba.co.uk and you can buy badges, you can get access to all our secret stuff behind the scenes. It's lots of fun. Go to fasterstrike.com, you can buy some DVDs and downloads and books. Let's sit back, relax and enjoy this special episode of Rahelastaba recorded at the Bristol Slapstick Festival, Matt Friends. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage your host this evening, Richard Herring. Hello, hello again. Uh, what a lovely, I've had a lovely day uh, in this theatre. If you've been here all day, you've seen WC Fields, you've seen the goodies, uh, you've seen Tim Vine. We're working our way forward into the future. In, after this, we're going to be showing you who's going to be famous in 10 years' time. Uh, is, uh, we're going back 10 years now to uh, the Inbetweeners, and we've got one of the cast and one of the creators uh, of the Inbetweeners with us. Unfortunately, uh, Ian Morris, uh, who was also going to be here, one of the other creators, is, un is, is hurt his foot in LA. <laughs> who cares? It'll, it'll turn up in some script in the future, as so we'll, fi we'll find it. It's all just about him, this, uh, the in-betweeners, I think, and stuff he's done. Uh, I think, and him and Damon. Um, will you please welcome uh, two people. One of them is best known as the assistant producer of two episodes of the 11 o'clock show. That's the oh, best he's done. And the other was Tom from Straw Donkeys. Apparently, even I'd forgotten that I'd written that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Will you please welcome uh, Damon Beasley and Joe Thomas? <laughs> lovely to see hello. you. Oh, hello, lovely to see you. Hello. Come in, sit down. Thanks. How are you doing, fellas? Good, thank you. Got some you. beers? Yeah. Because yeah. we're legends. Yeah. 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 Be edgy <laughs> late night we show. Are. It is. Yeah. Watch out. <laughs> And the Two goodies, the goodies didn't drunk. have beers, that's what I'm saying. That's, yeah. that's <laughs> an interesting if they <laughs> <laughs> So, ten years since the in between. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Weird. yeah. that's yeah. gone fast. It has yeah, gone fast. It's, gone it's fast. one of those things, it's a sort of made up anniversary though, isn't it? Because I always think of it as ten it's ten years from when it went out the first it's not like ten years from the end of it when it finished. No, you know, that's true. Like, no. So it feels like a bit of a cheat when we do that. Okay. But you know, it is ten years and we are a lot older. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And did you think at the beginning it was, did you have any inkling it would be the phenomena that it has become? No. Never. No. Well, you don't do anything, do you really? And I, you well, I, as I say, I, I have done a previous podcast with you yes. when I spoke about when I first met Damon and Ian, <laughs> who's not here because he's broken his foot. Um, and I described them as, uh, I think, a pair of chumps. Yes. Which... Um, and my line was very much, we really liked them, but we did not respect them. <laughs> um, so... Uh, <laughs> He's just uh, here to me. Time, yeah. well, I'm, uh, that's my position. Well, I knew, I knew Ian for a, lot, for a long time. I met Ian very, very early on. Yeah, did you... Was that through Avalon? Yeah, um, so, yeah, he was days. like a, a beautiful young boy when I met him. Yeah. yeah. He really isn't. He's got, he's, he had you know, two working feet and everything. Yeah, well, the first yeah. time I ever saw Ian Morris, yeah. I laid eyes on him. Yeah. Like talking about my wife. But the first time I ever saw him was in a sketch on the Frank Skinner show. Right. So I was just watching at home. And I remember I was with my guy, a flatmate that, at the time, and a good friend of mine. And we quite, we, it was his first series of the chat show, Frank Skinner's. And we were big yeah. Skinner, Frank Skinner fans then. And we watched it. And there's a sketch. There was, a, there was an Essex MP. I can't remember, Jerry Hayes, I think it was. And there was some sort of scandal about yeah. him. It was kind of like a uh, closet gay scandal. And they did a sketch where Jerry Hayes sung to his young intern, uh, 
the song from Chess. Uh, isn't it good? Yeah. Oh, so good. Isn't, he, isn't it madness? He can't be mad. And Ian played the young intern that right. Frank's Jerry Hayes had an affair with. Yeah. And I thought he's got that, that guy's got something about him. He's, <laughs> I'm he's gonna, really, one day I'm going to one write day a I'm gonna hit meet sitcom him. with him. Yeah. So he's, like, he's embarrassingly into it, I would say, having watched that clip. He's <laughs> yeah. really trying. He commits. So I think, I, yeah, I mean, I was quite, when I met him later on, I was like, oh, you did that. I mean, that was, A, it's weird because you're just in the office. He's not an actor. So, like, no. it's a weird thing to do, like, to show your parents, <laughs> I would have thought. But, yeah, so that was the first time I ever laid eyes on Ian Morris. That's interesting to know. And so what brought you, what brought you two together as a, a partnership, of, a creative partnership? I think it's just, I think we were working on the 11 o'clock show together. Yeah. So it was you just that, that show was on anyone who didn't remember it or see it. It was on three times a night for about six weeks. It was a topical news show, and you kind of you you know you had to get in in the morning at about six a.m. and look at the newspapers and then record a show in the evening. It was all written that day more or less. So we spent a lot of time together putting those shows together, and they weren't particularly well received. <laughs> so there's a bit of a siege mentality when you work on a big show like that that takes a lot of your time and effort. So yeah, we spent a lot of time together there, and then I think we just ended up working together. We, R Ricky Gervais was on that show yeah. for a bit, so I remember working. Oh, that's you know, I remember being introduced to Ricky to make some VTs with him. At first well, it had day. an amazing, you know, the amazing yeah. amount of people came out. But you two, Ricky, um, Ali G, was obviously started in on. Yeah, I mean, normally, they, yeah, they, that's the order they remember yes. them in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you two. <laughs> But yeah, you yeah. Too. Well, that's <laughs> yeah. Jimmy Carr. Quite, I remember Jimmy Carr was, was on it. yeah on there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm trying to think of else. But there was obviously Ali G. Mackenzie Crook. Yeah, yeah Mackenzie Crook did it. Yeah. yeah, Ian Lee and Daisy Donovan. Yeah. But I think that's one of those things. Isn't it? I think we spoke we spoke earlier when we said about you know a bit of luck's involved in anything, isn't it? In terms of you know how you get on in any industry. And I, we were very lucky to work with people who were particularly brilliant in their own field. So yeah. even though you would never... I mean, with Sasha, yeah, you thought, thought he's very... He, you know, he's very intense in terms of what he wants to do with Ali G, and he kind of knew it, and, you know, he's... Yeah. He, uh, whereas, he didn't see it so much with your face, to be honest. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> He seemed quite lazy. If I mean, he's very funny. He seemed quite lazy, but yeah. So, but you, do, you know, there is that osmosis and sort of, you know, you hope a bit of contamination from other brilliant people that you're working yeah. around. Not that we're brilliant, but they were. And so, what was the the in, in between? Is you just thought we're going to write a sitcom, or yeah, kind of. It was Ian. So I, we were both producers and directors in in TV like that, like yeah. comedy, entertainment, comedy, and we we ended up working at uh, Channel Four for a bit. So as um, commissioning executives where we were just, you know, looking at new stuff for Channel 4. And Ian stayed a lot longer than me. I stayed there for about two years. I was working on E4, but he was there for, for four years. But when he left, his boss, Caroline Leddy, who used to run comedy at Channel 4, she'd said to him, look, you know, I think you're very funny. I think the way you, you know, something about your voice and what you say and how you chat with your friends, I think it's really funny. Could you try, would you write a script for us? Right. So it's kind of like a golden watch. Is it a golden watch you get when they retire you? It's <laughs> kind of like, can you stop working for us? And, <laughs> but we'll give you a script. And Ian had said to me, we were living together at the time, he said, would you write it? Would you want to write it with me? So that was the first thing that we'd ever, right. we'd done short form stuff. So really like sketch writing for other people. And when I say sketches, they were literally, you know, things that you had to make up on the day. And yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we did that. So that was it. And, that, and then we spent a lot of time talking together about what, you know, what, what it would be. What, how could we, you know, what, what would it be that we wanted to write? And we were both very influenced by the same sort of, you know, uh, comedy growing up, like everybody was, I guess, at that, in that era. So there was, you know... Uh, a lot of a lot of the American stuff. A lot. I mean, obviously, all of our kind of British, you know, great shows, and we were watching, you know, Young One. I just I didn't miss the Young Ones. I was around for the Young Ones, but I think the first one that sort of caught me was Knowing Me, Knowing You. Right. That was like my show. I remember thinking, oh, I, my parents don't know this is a proper show with yeah. Partridge and we had the day. I created Alan so. Partridge. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. And uh, so we were, so we we had a similar taste, and we also thought there's n when we talked about it, we thought, what's a, you know, what's What's the funniest? What's the funniest time almost of your life? I mean, we had a lot of stories, and they were continuing to happen to us, which were just sort of anecdotes that were about personal disasters. But you know, we both still had a real sort of fondness. I shouldn't say it in this day and age, 
16-year-old <laughs> 16 16-year-old yes. boys and how <laughs> they speak. 16's fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. OK. Uh, so that was the starting point, really, was that we were like, we, you know, I, th I think... Uh, American Pie, we both like that film. We like kind of, we like, I think, a bit of American film comedy as well fused into it. I guess yeah. if you were trying to start well, a, it's a very, but it's a very British take on it. And, and was, is it true, I don't know if it's true, I think it's something I heard, that you yeah. were initially going to set it in the 80s and then yeah. you updated it? It's all set in the 80s. Did you not notice? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they said, you know, why are you doing it in the 80s? And we were like, well, because it's, you know, when we remembered it, it was yeah. late 80s. And... Uh, and they were like, yeah, but that's just like makes it ridiculously expensive for no reason. Right. There, was like, like, there weren't eighties specific jokes. It wasn't like no. people were walking around, you know, with dealy boppers on. <laughs> people remember the eighties or anything like that. It was, you know, it was just about a school. So it was a good call, really. Yeah. Yeah. So for cost reasons, really, more than anything, we didn't yeah. do it about the eighties. Got to make a show about the eighties later, yes. and they were right. Yeah, cost a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute pointless exercise. <laughs> And so when it ca there's quite a lot of stories coming out of the casting that I've, I've yep. seen recently. So um, Joe wasn't necessarily your first. Was he your first choice for the for the role? No, but then no. no I mean, Joe actually no, auditioned not. for it and failed failed the audition. Yeah, I, mean, I, was, I was one of the few people who they knew wasn't up to it. Right. <laughs> um, so the field was everyone in the world could still do it. Yeah. Joe's not right. You've been decided. Yeah, okay. very early on, Joe yes. got ruled out. And then you, so, got, yeah. I think we saw everyone else in the world, so you got ruled back in. Yeah, I was back in. <laughs> <laughs> Weirdly back in. Well, there's some, there were some quite big actors who auditioned and nearly got the roles of, not necessarily yeah. your role, but uh, Matt Smith was up uh, for yeah. Will, was he? He was, yeah. Um, yeah, I feel bad about talking about people who've done auditions, but Ian no, sort listen. of told everyone that that happened, yeah. and it's not like he... And also, they were really now, rude anyway. about you. He was really rude about you on my podcast, so I think you Yeah, no, I don't mean... I, I say anything about him. Oh, I'm talking okay. about Matt Smith, really. Oh, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Like, oh, there's another role Matt Smith yeah. didn't get. <laughs> I think he's all right with it. I think, I think he's... Doctor Who is probably... Yeah, he's, he's, done, he's, he's made he's his peace with, with he's that. He's doing OK. He's doing all right. But, yeah, he came in. He was brilliant, but he was hit Will. And I think the problem for him, really, being Will, or for us, not him, but we, he was kind of, like, a bit too heroic. Yes. Which you can see now, yeah. you know, obviously. And so... We're like, yeah, he's not quite... Bit. He's, he's, he's doing a really good job at being a loser, but, you know, I think you have to be a real loser yeah, on yeah. some level. <laughs> yeah. We're very much about DNA acting, <laughs> yeah. aren't we? It's sort of I'm like... starting to see why I yeah, came yeah. back in. Well, because you'd lost. You were the ultimate loser. You've That's been, it. You've been yeah, we don't even want someone one. who passes the audition. <laughs> never call me Never call me a chump again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I mean, I... <laughs> no, I, I guess... <laughs> We just didn't know what we were doing was part of the problem as well. It's hard casting. <laughs> it can be a problem. Yeah, yeah it's hard casting. You are essentially casting yourself yeah. a little bit. And that's really, like, that can skew the results, I think, sometimes. Because, you you know, you think, oh, I wouldn't say it like that. And then I think, yeah, well, that's, you know, why I'm not a performer yeah. or particularly funny. So, <laughs> you know, we, we went a bit through that phase of driving ourselves around. And it took other people outside of the production, well, not outside production, but the director of the series at the time said, you know, we should see... I think we'd been working with Joe and Simon Bird, who were doing sketches, because they did uh, Cambridge Footlights, and they were on another little radio show we were making at the time, Internet Radio, where it was just, you know, young, new comics trying out stuff. And Joe, Joe and Simon were brilliant on that, and they were writing their own material. And then somebody saw it from the production and said, why can't we see those two guys? And we're like, well, we saw Joe, he's rubbish. And, <laughs> <laughs> and Simon Bird, he's way too camp. And they were like, yeah. <laughs> so, well, let's just bring them in. And then they came in and did this audition. I think they actually asked to come in and audition again, and they were brilliant. And yeah. Yeah. Which one is you out of... The t out of uh, Simon is you was... You? Yeah, when we wrote it, so Ian was kind of... Ian's yeah. very clearly Will. Yeah. It's very easy to write for me to write Will, because yeah. I just think, what did Ian say when that happened to him? Yeah. And then Simon was more me, at the, you know, when, when it started out. I think Joe's brought his own particular sort of tw yeah. twist to it, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, that's a kind way of... <laughs> no, I think you made it you. much, you know, funnier than we probably... That's the great thing when you get actors... Who yeah, but well, what's interesting, did you make a conscious decision to cast people who weren't known? Because that's the... the or is it just, many, because, or just because yeah. they, were just, they weren't many young not, actors? Yeah, that's the thing. I, one of the things that happened was we wrote the script, delivered it, and everybody liked it at the channel, but then, you know, it was kind of, it was like, you know at the time, I thought it was one of those genuine sort of it's good, but we're not going to do it, you know, let down gently. And we got, we got let down, they weren't going to do it. And they, one of the reasons was you can't get great actors who look like they're 16, yeah. comic actors, to deliver a joke. And people won't watch it on Friday night on Channel 4. But 
uh, I think weirdly what happened, we kind of agreed to it with them because we've been in commissioning. We're like, yeah, we're idiots. Why do we write that? Yeah. But then a year later, E4 was spending a lot of money on, uh, they'd, they'd made lots of shows, very low budget. And yeah. then they thought, why don't we just blow all our budget on two shows, but properly funded and we'll promote them and we'll do a drama and a comedy. And Skins was the drama and it went brilliantly. And we were the comedy and yeah. it didn't go quite as brilliantly at first. But yeah, that, that so, and what in between we'd written that script, they'd asked us to, this is, one other thing, I mean, they'd asked us to write another version of the script, but make the characters 28. So we'd written a script where they were all 28, they all lived in like central London, and they had kind of good jobs in the media, yeah. and they still had the same attitudes and said the same things. They went on a little journey, and then we handed it in, and everyone was like, I mean, they can't say this stuff if they're 28, can they? Like, well, that's the charm. Genuine. That's the charm. I mean, yeah. you know, not that's the trick. Yeah, but, they, but the, the charm of it is that they can say whatever they want because they're kids, yes. right? And so the, it's, it would be offensive in the mouths of, of anyone else. Oh. Um, at, but because the, you know, they're idiots and they're children, it, we've all been through that. We've all been through that stage of just being yeah. idiotic and saying stupid things and doing stupid things. And no one really listens because you're, no. like, you know, they're. Uh, I think they have great power, teenagers, but they don't really realise it. But people don't want to listen. They don't want to get too close to them because they're scared of them, whereas yeah. actually they're idiots. But they want people to take them seriously because yeah. then they think they're young adults. And yeah. Well, that's why it's, you know, it's, we were watching Laurel Hardy and, you know, that's, there's people taking themselves seriously, but being, you know, they're essentially children as well, Laurel and Hardy, with this little pecking order going on. But yeah, so it's, it's it, well, you know, but I also feel like the commissioners always say this, you know, you've got to get a name in your sitcom. I'm on yeah. sitcoms all the time and it's, who's going to be the name, who's going to be the name? And it seems to me that nearly every successful sitcom starts from with new newcomers. That's, does, that's, yeah, that's I, why I don't understand why commissioners always say, we need a big name so people will watch it. You look at The Office, yeah, and those, those yeah. people then yeah, become yeah. big names, yeah. the in-betweeners, those yeah. become, you know, it comes from an art, it comes from... Yeah. Fist of Fun. And, Fist of Fun, yeah, look at how it's turned no, out. It did, uh, no, but it, it genuinely was so. That's <laughs> like, all, yeah. you know, and our, we always, because we were schooled in that, I think, yeah. because we did the 11 o'clock show and we were, you know, all of our comedy heroes were coming out that way. Yeah. We, you know, that's, we've always worked like that, I think. We, yeah. you know, ended up working with the... Uh, the ladies who worked in the film on the film uh, made a TV show like so Jess Nappett wrote a TV show called Drifters that yes, came yeah. out of there and it's like you know it always feels great when that's happening but you discover that you know you discovered like a whole raft of new I mean even Greg Davies really is yeah. the discovery of Greg Davies is down to they were, he was, yeah, I mean, he was brilliantly funny at the time. Yeah. I think they were doing Clang, weren't they? Yeah, they were. Yeah, and yeah. It was a, that was a real treat to yeah. go and watch that, and Greg was brilliant. But yeah, I don't think he'd done a lot on TV at that point. No. Well, and it broke, because it was, when you look at it, I think, that, I think I might have even seen someone take out all of his bits and put them on one YouTube <laughs> thing. It's not a huge amount of no. time on screen, but it's such a... Fabulous character, and he is, he is very good. So casting it is much more important yeah. than, you know. Yeah, I mean, and I'd like to say we were sort of geniuses at it, but <laughs> I think it's a bit of, there's some alchemy involved sometimes, but sometimes, again, like getting the four boys, we were very lucky to find, I think. Yeah. It was an exhaustive search, but we were quite lucky that we managed to get them in the end because they seem you couldn't imagine it being another four. And there was a moment when we got them in for the first rehearsal and they all lined up. And they kind of like, it must, it was a bit like seeing the Beatles cross, uh, you know, in front yeah. of Abbey Road on the, on the thing. It was Very a bit, similar. the shape of them, <laughs> there was something about the shape of them yeah. that looked good, like weird, do you know what I mean? It's kind of a weird visceral thing. You just look at it and go, that looks funny. I mean, they look <laughs> funny together. <laughs> I, I auditioned for two parts. In the I, I remember. You, uh, I think one of them, you are probably lucky not to get one. Yeah. You were Peter, were you I was, Peter I was, I, usually I would get this part. I was, I was, I auditioned to be the paedophile teacher. So I'm not sure. It's, but, uh, that's usually stock in tracks. Tick, don't even need to see him. Just, we've seen this photo tick. Yeah. And I was, another part that I, the mechanic guy, but that was, that was, um, I could have done the pedo teacher. I mean, you know, the act in it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but Wayne was fantastic at it. Wayne never, was never worked again. No. <laughs> <laughs> He's one of the few people who doesn't get recognised on the street, though, no. so it's gone well for him. But yeah, yeah. saying that, that, you know, people don't associate him with that part. Yeah. Hey, look, because Ian couldn't make it, oh, uh, yeah. I just we he did kindly record a message for, for us. So we're going to see. We can, oh, we can see him. We can see, uh, we can see Ian Morris is going to say hello to us. Let's see what he says. I haven't seen this. Hello, Bristol Slapstick Fest. I'm sorry I can't be there um, for lots of reasons. I 
Loved Bristol. I went to university there, got a 2 2, got 4% in one of my exams. Um, we shot a festival there a couple of years ago and I had a great time staying there. I particularly love the Clifton area, obviously, because I'm a bit of a ponce. Um, uh, I can't be there because I've broken my foot. So these are some crutches I've got, and I can, I mean, it's pretty grim, but basically I broke my foot falling down some stairs, uh, which I think is pretty apposite for the Slapstick Festival. Um, I'm also sorry I can't be there because I know you've got the best. My favourite, and who I consider the best person of the four in between us, um, which is Blake. And you know, Blake is really—he's <laughs> an incredible actor. He's very funny. He's very kind. He's very thoughtful. And you know, I think you'll get a lot from what he's got to say about the show. Certainly more so than any of the other three. So, thanks again, Blake, for everything, mate. Um, you're a genius. Uh, also, I'm sad to not be there because I'm a huge fan of Richard Herring's, and not just because Richard was the first person who I respected in comedy who told me that they liked The Inbetweeners. I think it was, we were at some gig near uh, Broadcasting House in the BBC and, um, and Richard said it was good and I assumed he'd hate it. So that's pretty much made me very happy ever since. I'm obviously a huge Richard Herring fan. So I'm sorry I can't be there. I'm sorry this is so badly shot, but I can't really stand up either because I've got a broken foot. Um, and I'm really gutted to not be there and I hope you have a fun time. And thanks Damon for everything and thanks Blake. <laughs> Ian Morris, ladies and gentlemen, not a very nice. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he liked me, but not enough to put me in the fucking show. So. I didn't see. I didn't see that. Do you know he's <laughs> one of the, when we were living together in the flat? One of yeah. the things that he would regularly drag out. Is, <laughs> why does everything sound creepy when I say it? It's like he would. Drag, he used to have a, a, a book. And he'd say, "I love this. This really, uh, you know, was one of my favourite comedy books." And it was a fist of fun. We did put a lot of work into fist of fun. I meant to talk to the goodies about that. Actually, let's get them back on. Yeah, because uh, their books were a massive inspiration. So they, they put a lot of work into them. So we we felt we had to do the same. Um, it was interesting. You were sitting next to Bill Oddie at dinner. Yeah. And it came up because, of course, in between us, and they had a, a song called "The Inbetweenies," which was about being too young to be a teenager which I suppose is not quite the the demographic of this and too yeah. old to be a mother's pet but did was there any crossover between the name of the in-betweeners and the goodies just to give us a link between these two interviews what? say yes yes <laughs> yes but I but do there think there's this thing with writing you I, you know I don't know if it's for everyone but it feels to me the older I get and the more stuff that I've written I keep finding stuff within the scripts that I think are conscious choices but then I suddenly realize that they are just like subconscious you know, bits of data floating around that just find their way onto the page. I didn't mean to do that. I thought no. I'd put it on for another reason. So it could be any... You know, you always think, it probably is, is yeah. the truth. Because I, I, like, the good is, well, almost, you know, while you, we were saying you couldn't sort of watch it again or re-watch it because we didn't have, you know, videos and yeah. anything really of them. They didn't exist. But it probably was the first thing I remember in the 70s of being quiet rock and roll funny, you know, where you're just like, as a kid, you're just like, this is... Like all TV should be like the goodies. I don't yeah. know why are they not making more shows like this. And sure. so it felt like almost the earliest one that you. But also, the in between is, is like I mean, it's an excellent name because it absolutely nails what the show is, right? And I think that's it's about being just between being a child and being an adult, and that's exactly what the characters are. Yeah. And that's and that's and so from the name you've kind of got it, which is still it, it's quite rare. I think that's part of the reason it's a. Uh, we had yeah, no it was idea, very though. nearly not cool that though. Yeah, they, they, what other names like, did you have a love win? Yeah, there were some really bad names. Uh, uh, Joe, what dickheads. <laughs> I, yeah. I like dickheads, but they could all right. Oh, you can't dickhead. really just, <laughs> just <laughs> what's a good fucking idiot? <laughs> can't really call that. A load of idiots. The producer really wanted, like, the producer, he was a brilliant producer and a, a great man, Chris Young, but. Like he didn't, yeah. he, he didn't own a TV. He'd never, like, I don't know why how he, we ended up. He's never slid, like we used to put references from The Simpsons. Or go, it's like a joke in The Simpsons. You go, um, so what, what is, what's The Simpsons? You go, it's a show on TV. And then you go, well, don't worry, it's like that character in EastEnders. What is EastEnders? And you just yeah. go, oh. But he's, he was really stuck on the name one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. <laughs> and we're like, why? Well, there's four of them. <laughs> Sort of Sesame Street. It got quite far down the sort of like, you know, the World Cup of names. Yeah. One, two, three, four was yeah. still in the hat. We were like, it's not going to be called one, two, three, four. <laughs> it's going to look like a mistake. Um, there was a good bit where it was going to be called Desperados. Yeah. And then got close another that, yeah. show came out that was called Desperados. Right. Yeah. Um, and it was, it had Emily Head's dad in it. And yeah. Emily Head. And it was like, just yeah. really weird. And I've forgotten that. I rang up Ian and said there's another show called Desperados. <laughs> I think Ian thought it was a, like a prank or something. Right. It's very strange. Um, 
But that would have been all right. But, um, but we got to the point nice. where we were going through song titles. Legi yeah. Legends was one as well. Yeah, well. Legends. But there was a, literally this playlist of the songs. We were just like, I don't know. And then we were t calling out names of bands that were on yeah. the playlist. And then, so, uh, you know, it was a cure, there's one Cure track on there, the uh, In Between Days. Right. And so In Between Days went across as a title to Channel 4. And then I think the commissioning editor said, oh, there's something in that. And then we played around with that. And came, yeah. that's where it really came from, In Between. Oh, that's, that's very interesting. Good. Um, <laughs> it, it's, 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 it's interesting when and also when, because in hindsight, you kind of think, oh, it had to be those yeah. four guys and it had to be called the in-betweeners. But, you know, it could easily have been... Uh, yeah. It could have been Matt Smith, been, not yeah. Joe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it could have been a different name, better actors. But, um, <laughs> but you know, there you go. Let's get some other yeah, people yeah. in to write yeah, you can't, They can't prove that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so a, a lot of it, though, was based on your and Ian's actual things that have happened to you. Is that right, Damon? Yeah, I think which, a lot so of what, it. What, which bits of it are, like, verbatim from your life? Uh, oh, God. Uh, do you know what? I've, I don't think I've got any more shame about this anyway. But like, I, I find myself repeating this story a lot, and then waking up in the middle of the night, going, "No, you didn't tell that in front of a room of strangers." Again. But there's one thing. There's the bit where Simon, seeing as he's sitting here. By the way, when Joe checked into the hotel, he was checked in as Simon <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> It's, com it's confusing, it's confusing, it's confusing sure. that one of the actors is called Simon and one of the characters is called yeah. Simon. Yeah. But I would say not that confusing. No. <laughs> it's possible to get your head around yeah. it. Yeah. But si so the character Simon ends up getting a hand job from a, a, a girl at an under 18s disco on the, like, almost on the dance floor yeah. and, they're all watch and they're standing up. And that, hap and that happened to me. You were the one giving the hand job. <laughs> I was, yeah. <laughs> and it, <laughs> And I've ended up reliving <laughs> the horror of telling them. So it was yeah. bad at the time because there was this kind of, like I said, this horrible, you know, uh, sort of cognitive dissonance that you have to have where you sort of think, this is probably all right. Because <laughs> no one's ever touched my penis before. So I don't think this is probably, I mean, you know, this is probably an okay thing to be happening. So that, whereas obviously you know it's not and your yeah. friends are standing there watching. So that, <laughs> and I, and I took it once, Joe as a favour, I grew up in a town called Gravesend, which is a river town, and it's quite deprived. But I, you know, you didn't know that at the time. I used to have fun growing up in Gravesend, and we used to go to the under-18 discos there. And years later, a friend of mine started working for the council on the entertainment team, and they said, look, we're now running, you've probably played it, the Woodville Halls yes. in Gravesend. Yeah. So the Woodville, I'm now doing like, the entertainment stuff there. Would you bring the film along, because it had just been launched on the boys, and do a screening? And we were like, yeah, I'll do that. would be really nice. And before we went on, the guy who was doing your role, essentially, was just somebody who worked on the Ents team, but he used to be a red coat, right? You know, and so he was like, do you want to talk about this bit? I've got the clip out about where, you know, you got a hand job on it. And it was in this hall, wasn't it? I was like, I'm not sure. So just, <laughs> there's a lot of people there that I might know, and I think my, my family might be. I was just like, should we see how it goes, thinking, I won't do it. He said, all right, you give me this. If it's going well, give me the signal. <laughs> and we went on. We literally went on. They brought them on and got a huge round of applause, brought me on, sat me down. He said, David, this hall's got a special place in your heart. <laughs> Take a look at this. And then played the clip, and then I had to sort of go... I told the whole story, and, then, and he was like, it was, it was somewhere in here, wasn't it? it was like, and he's like, I was like, yeah, it was just at the back there, just over there. And people weren't really laughing. They were like, this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, you know. Yeah, and Ian told again. Ian told me I think that the the, the bit where they're slightly sliding yeah. along on their knees, uh, but that, that happened to him uh, uh, like when he was here. quite old. He was about to pull with some. I think that was here in Bristol. Win. Yeah, when he was at pr university in Bristol, yeah. Ian. Had, yeah, he, like uh, he said, it was a very sort of like forward, very attractive girl that he kind of like had his eye on. Like not his eye on, but he, you know, he was sort of been scared to approach all yeah. night who he thought you know he is attracted to and then she came over to him and started talking to him and said look you know you and me what are you doing for the rest of the night and he was like well nothing and then because he was so sort of like a bit over egging it and a bit nervous and trying to put off because she was like let's just go back to your place he's like yeah yeah we could do anything I mean we <laughs> literally could do anything well I mean we could do that or he could just kick her shoes off and slide across the floor. <laughs> and so he was running up and down and sliding. I think he did it three times. And then when he went, as he turned at one end, he realised she wasn't there anymore. That was the last time he ever saw her. Quite sweet, really, isn't it? It yeah. is sweet. But again, it's, but I think we all have those memories. I mean, he's a bit old to be doing that. But we all have, we all have these memories. Those memories of just being clueless. And I think that's... Uh, and and. Yeah, being scared of it. That's what's lovely is when they actually get the opportunity to have sex or yeah. get close to having sex, they're all they're frightened. absolutely terrified. It's yeah. Just, yeah. It's, it's, I suppose it's the sweetness behind 
all of this quite gross and unpleasant stuff that's going on. I think yeah. part of the like the comic sort of process in like I, I, there's a I think comic comic writers and comic performers and comedians have this uh, sort of trait is that generally when these things happen to you, most people bury them deep down as traumatic events. They're <laughs> yeah. kind of like, that was awful, I don't ever want to... And whereas <laughs> yeah. there's a way of almost like, you know, therapising your way through yeah. it, which is to try and turn it into an anecdote and something that you... You know, I think it's quite useful, because yeah. otherwise, you know, it's... You know, well, your I life's think, quite tragic. Well, I think, no, I've defi clearly. definitely through comedy I've found that, and I think it... And that's why the audiences like it, because everyone... They haven't done those exact things. Not everyone's been wanked off in the Woodville Hall. Yes, they have. <laughs> yes, Most they of, have. Many of us have. Uh, <laughs> not everyone. You didn't stick with semen the floor in there. Uh, but, <laughs> but we've all been through. You know, we, we've all been through that, and, and most people are bottling up. So the minute you start discussing it, a it's yeah. a laughter of relief, but it's also kind of oh god, it's normal. It's normal to be such a yeah. prick. All this must you. happen to other people, right? Yeah, like yeah. these terrible things. I think this all the time. I'm like. I can't. It can't just have happened to me and Ian, all that stuff. <laughs> and then when you, you know, you see yeah. a show resonates and you think, oh, thank God. Because people are saying, oh, yeah, that's me and my friends. Yeah. And that's, you know, what we remember about growing up. But, yeah. It is and, a, and the characters yeah. are very well observed. I mean, everyone had kind of a friend who was just a bullshit, a liar, and everything was a lie and you knew it was a lie. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone had that sweet, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a lovely uh, group of characters. It's, uh, female characters, it's, it's so true that the, female, the females at school, the girls at school are sort of so much more mature and together and the guys are... Yeah, you're scared, of, you're scared of them, I think. Yeah. Literally scared of Definitely them. Definitely still am. Um, yeah. Terrifying, isn't it, women? That's funny, though, because that's from the first show. Yeah. And when that went out, the first episode, and it went out, they, they basically put the first episode and second episode out on the, on the same night, and the reviews for the first show were, this is, te like, people would review them separately, because that's what people do. Yeah. Dicks. <laughs> 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 the first show's terrible, and, and they were like, oh, but the second show's great. But, like, you know, now you look back on it, you can think, there's not a huge amount of difference, but there's this thing in comedy where, you know, people just aren't prepared to go with it for a while. You yeah. need to earn their trust, so I've kind of always had that. I've learned from that, I've learned, don't put any good jokes in the first five minutes of a new comedy. <laughs> yeah. Make it very visual, you know, make yeah. it interesting and engaging, but, like, it just is wasted, because people will have to go back and watch it before they go, oh, yeah. Yeah, I think it's it. true. It, all the things I really like, you know, I, the first time I saw them, I was... Well, sometimes you come into something in the wrong point, but also yeah. you'd be confused. But I remember seeing Larry Sanders, which is probably my all-time favourite show, and I just didn't understand what was going on. Yeah. You know, um, even... Uh, Arrested Development, I didn't really like to be... Yeah, I've only got into that yeah. like in the last two years. It yeah. just passed me by. But and yeah. so what, often if a thing's got its own kind of comic timing and comic feel, it just takes a couple, it does. Of, a couple of beats to get into it. I remember feeling the same thing about The Office, thinking, yeah. like, this is kind of weird, what is this? And, and well, it really taken a while before I even noticed that it had jokes in it, which it definitely does. Like <laughs> yeah. it, it, but I was like, that's odd, what is that strange thing? But you have to kind of get in tune with that. Now it's very obvious where all the kind of sort of laugh points are, but it, it seems odd to say, but it generally wasn't obvious at yeah. the time. I don't think it was, you know, The Office is an amazing example of something that could easily have gone the other way. Yeah. The BBC didn't really get it or like it. It, only got, it got repeated, I think, didn't it? I think yeah. one but of it's the John Peel like yeah. or something, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. I think they did, there's a legendary... The first series was repeated or something. Yeah. yeah. It's like it went out in August, didn't it? Like, so it was kind of like, oh, it's, uh, you know, maybe no, no, they buried it a bit because it was low budget yeah. and they didn't know how it was going to work. And I remember a, a really... Like one of the most spectacular missing the point reviews of a comedy great by Victor Lewis. Smith. Oh, yes, Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. It's just like, you know, really, really scientifically pulling it to pieces <laughs> yeah. about what's happening. Yeah, his show review was it. literally there is a great show to be made about an office, but this is not it. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, like no, is it? It is yeah. this. Yeah. That's what getting is notes is like. That, that review, I remember, it's, I think this is what getting notes as a writer is like. It doesn't mean anything to the pub, like, gen, public at large, because it was very specific. It was yeah. like, yeah, we're not going to go for this for this reason. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. But, it's, but it's, I, I find that fascinating, because, you know, also all the people, both these shows, The Inbetweeners and The Office, if those shows hadn't become successful, if the first series of The Inbetweeners, they'd gone, yeah, you know, it's done OK, and we, but we're going to leave yeah. it there. Then you know all the things that wouldn't have happened as a result of that. I mean, for yeah. you personally, it would have been terrible for you personally. You wouldn't have met your. Wouldn't I'd fiance. have? Wouldn't have any you company. Wouldn't have, you wouldn't have any career. Yeah. You know, no one I, else yeah. would have employed you. We found. No. That what would, would that you would have done? I mean, I've never asked you this. What would you? What was your career path? It yeah, was, I was it comic or? Uh, you just going to do a I don't know. I was just drifting around. I was just annoyed. I'd, I mean, I was just left university. Yeah. 
I was just annoyed I didn't get first. <laughs> and I was just going to stay like that for the rest of my life. So did you have a plan, though, where you're like, I'm going to be a no, no, sort of no, no. Di I live with Simon. dinosaur hunter? I don't know. What, <laughs> I live, uh, yeah. what do you do when you come out of Cambridge? I live with Simon Bird, and he would... Sort of, we, he said we had to have a sketch group and like write mm. together, and he'd sort of come and li I think literally get me out of bed. I'd be like, oh, it's, it's pointless. And then Simon would be like, come on, we need to, we should do something. We do an Edinburgh show, and I don't know. I mean, it was just a very kind of not. It was a kind of quite sort of drifty era. I think yeah. there was a sense of like kind of. There's no. Oh, well, I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. Really, you don't need to do anything. Do you? Like, it was quite sort of. I don't know. Like even my. I think degree, I did a degree in history. I think partly I was just like, oh, just anything, just anything, just leave me alone, just something, just, I think, like, I'd, I'd, I, like, history seemed like it wouldn't hurt me. I'd be like, that's fine, it's old, <laughs> old stuff, that, that'll be all right. Um, uh, but, um, so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't, know. I, I don't know, I really don't know. It's, it's, Listen, I, thought, I love that there's literally no, there was no plan, like life plan, like a proper job. Yeah. There's been no mention of a job at all in that. It was like, what would I have done if I wasn't... I was, a, yeah, I, well, we all had other jobs. I was, a pri I was doing tutoring yeah. for a bit mm. after the first series. Got paid for the first series, just spent all the money straight away in restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was like, I mean, the first series, we, we, it was, we were all unknown, so we weren't paid at like absolutely like Hollywood rates. So it was, it was a lot, it was a big lump sum of money for me. Just splurged all that. I think, yeah, all just on food. On restaurants. On yeah. restaurants. <laughs> restaurants. <laughs> restaurants. Nice I was like, I will enter the restaurant <laughs> scene. <laughs> 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 next, rest, next, next for Joe, restaurants. <laughs> School degree. Rest, sulk, restaurants, <laughs> then what? Um, and uh, yeah, so then we all got other jobs. So I was, a, I was a private tutor, but I wouldn't have done that forever. I mean, that was just sort of teaching sure. kids how to pass the 11 plus and stuff. Yeah. Um, and uh, I was okay. But yeah, I really didn't have, I don't know, the idea of like vo having a vocation, I, I, I don't know, I just never, I've never had that. I literally never had it. I d didn't... It's lucky you came along. Lucky you gave yeah. him a second chance. Yeah. That stupid, charmed life. Especially if, was, especially if I was still, for some reason, interviewing you on the stage now. But here is yeah. Joe Thomas. Yeah. I'm, really going, I'm not doing anything. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and do you... So, the, the, you obviously knew Simon, but the other two guys, presumably, yeah. Yeah. you didn't know? No, I, um, I didn't know them. Uh, but, yeah, it was weird. We were at a time where I was still kind of open to new... Well, I suppose I'm still open to new people. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I, was the, I was very peculiarly open to them. And I think particularly, like, um, I knew Simon and the other two, we just bonded very quickly. I, I, I can't really explain why, because James Buckley in particular, all he did was... And he was very annoying. He was just a very annoying person who I would regularly complain about <laughs> to, um, to sort of the adults. Yeah. James is undermining me. He's destroying my confidence, I think, <laughs> quite maliciously. Um, he's found out my weak spots and he's probing them. <laughs> uh, could you make him stop? No, we won't. OK. <laughs> Um, he's, got a, he's got a talent for that as well. I mean, yeah. he was he he's, was he yeah. was straight onto you, wasn't he? And yeah, I, it's every quite easy to get onto me, really. But I, I am. Um, he was. Yeah, he knew what he was doing. But you became like I think that was interesting. Is that you actually became really quickly, very very tight. You, two. you we were very yeah. I think particularly. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Again, it's weird, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you, yeah. You both like messing around and. There was a good bit where James spent a whole series winking at me in takes, and his um, <laughs> and people would go, "Is there meant to be some sort of homoerotic <laughs> undercurrent between James and <laughs> so, uh, Jay and just mixing up the names now, <laughs> Jay and Simon?" He's like they pathologically all... unprofessional as well. I mean, you can say that among friends, but James, like, really, yeah, he's very, very talented, and he, he's like he could, so he could. I mean, it's really boring making TV, really, especially when you've got, like, four lead actors and they've all got to have close-ups and you have to do single takes of all of them, yeah. and it takes forever to do it. So, really, you know, what James decided quite early on was that he's going to have... If, as long as it wasn't him first doing his singles, then he'd have time to learn the lines rather than, like, preparing <laughs> for yeah. weeks and getting the... You know, getting the yeah, like, your, your single was just him practising. Like, yeah. wouldn't There'd be no eye contact with him at all. <laughs> he'd just bumble through it. Yeah. He, and he thought it was genuinely good fun to sort of just 
you know, put other people off <laughs> while they were trying to do, which I suppose at a certain extent it was quite good fun, but I think he massively underestimated the room of, like, quite sort of middle-aged sort of professionals <laughs> who had to stand around and watch it. <laughs> yeah. It went on hour after hour, like, can you go home, please? I mean, this is... Can you stop doing that? So... But you two were really, like, you know... And you still are, aren't you? You're still... We are still very close. I, I think... It, there is something about like being vulnerable, it, uh, sort of, and sharing vulnerabilities with other people that, that does kind of bonds you. And like we were all quite, kind of uh, raw. I think like we didn't really know what we were doing, and um, mm. we were young. I think almost like young. I mean, I was always like my excuse. I was too old for the character, but I hadn't done much acting, so I felt very young. I felt. I suppose I was. I was not young, but I was bad. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> so, um, uh, so, so I was like, well, that, I guess that sort of is a form of use. But you, yeah, I think that's like, you're that's unfair to yourself. Place, you, but, but yeah, I just think, you know, was, I've said this before, but I think when you write a joke, and, you know, there's so many ways from when, you know, you write that joke as a writer on a page where it can go wrong, you know, between, you know, how the production sort of sets up to present that, the actor's going to say it, director on the day, you know, there's so many ways it can be screwed up, you know, and, and I think that the one thing that I think people take for granted with the four boys and the way that, you know, the way they delivered their performances is the, the, the sense of comic timing. I think that's what we always, why we actually, despite being terrible at his audition <laughs> and uh, Simon being Krebby Camp, they were just, <laughs> you know, they were brilliantly funny and they understood comedy and they had a love of comedy. And yeah. James is the same. James is not a student. Yeah. He is a student of comedy, actually. He's probably, he's got a photographic memory. Like, he likes all yeah. the same things as we do. But he, but I think when it, you could, you know, that, that really helped because actually the one thing, you know, we probably weren't great directors of actors, but we kind of knew how we wanted our joke. Uh, you know, where, how the jokes were funny, and very, it wasn't pulling teeth. You know, they 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 were make, and at times making them funnier, and it was you know it was brilliant for that. I think that. that but then that whole looked. thing. I mean, it's the ethos of the show, isn't it? It's kind of funny if he's being the same as his character, or if he is the same as his character, <laughs> yeah, and that's I mean, why it works. And so it's the re it's again it's the reality of the situation and the reality of the group. Yeah, uh, and you know, yeah. it, it just takes one thing to go go wrong. I mean, we were talking about backstage about other sitcoms and things that have been successful, and things that haven't been successful, yeah. and it's just a bit of luck about the. Yeah, the, it is. Yeah, it just it kind of falls. But right. then it can, it can right. still be brilliant, and and no one spots yeah. it this time, and and you move oh, on to yeah. the next thing. So it's it's no. there's there's a lot of luck in things getting through, but I, d I also think that that luck is only takes you a certain distance, and the thing has to be. It has to work for to, to get to that next level, I think. Yeah. Which obviously the in between is good. Obviously after the series. I mean what point what point did the series like was it at between the first and the second series that it sort of took off and Oh really? Is it like weirdly I think, you know, going back to skins was getting a million, I think, on E4, so okay. a huge number then. And we were getting like three hundred thousand when we first went right. out. Second series got about double that. But there was a weird thing going on at the time. It's like Channel Four had just introduced their player, like an iPlayer, and yeah. it's called Four on Demand. And so Channel 4 were getting the stats back from that and they realised that our show was like made up almost like a third of the traffic. So right. it was like the first time it was like a non-traditional way of watching it at the same time it was going out. And yeah, you know, young people were obviously watching it a lot on that. So I think that really got us that second series. I think people yeah. were like, oh, well, there might, you know, should, there, there might be something in this. But it felt like it tipped sort of about midway through series two, you know. Yeah. I, I, I seem to is that when you noted you know obviously being in it that's a real kind of yeah I mean definitely series one it was it was small like yeah. if anyone, anyone who'd seen it one for me it was every person there was a certain run where everyone who said they'd seen it and liked it I could always connect them back to my parents right <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd be like oh I see yes that's your colleague of, and then yes. Um, but, and then eventually someone said, oh, I like that show. And I was like, that is a genuine stranger. Right. Um, so that was fine. I was like, something's happened here. Somebody who I isn't, sort of, isn't going to be at my parents' Christmas party <laughs> <laughs> has watched it. Um, I don't know what that was. But yeah, series one was still quite niche, I think. And um, by series three, it was big. And we did a big... I only did a big advert for it for series three that was, they'd obviously spent a lot of money on and was a kind of standalone thing. Um, but yeah. When did cabbies start saying, 
Oh, I've heard of that one. Yeah. It's like one of those yeah. things you yeah. kind of like, I remember like that would be a thing. They'd be like, well, what are you going to Channel yeah. 4 for then, mate? <laughs> yeah. And then you yeah. go, oh, we'll just do a thing. And then they'd normally be like, never heard of it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But so then they like, oh, start going, oh, I love that show. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Hang on. Who's, yeah. The one I was getting is, who's the funny one? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who's the funny one? I'm not, I'm not the funny one. Who was it? But I'm the sort of show, I'm sort of like the librarian of the show. Yeah. I can connect them to the one <laughs> that they find funny. <laughs> Obviously, it's always Jay. Obviously. Yeah. Um, when Cavi started pitching me quite often, the, oh, you, what you should do next is one about the cab trade. Yeah. Oh, you should follow us around and then record everything that we say. I was like, I'm not sure you can put that on TV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not the 70s. Yeah. <laughs> and so when did the, so you did the series and then the, the film kind of came out of that? Was it, was it sort of a natural progression or...? Well, you the, expecting to do a film? No, I think... I, I, it, was I think a, it was actually something we joke about. It was yeah. actually like, yeah. that was a... a we, like, as we'd be like, oh, yeah, when we're doing the movie. Like, um, so it was not expected, right? No, I think w what happened was, we were, you know, we were sort of not really... Or I think you don't really know when you... You know it's a big hit, but you don't sort of understand that it has a bit of a place in popular culture, you know, because it's just like, all right, well, it's just a big hit and it's happening now. I think we fin you know, we'd got to the end of three series and we were just like, I don't know, we want to move on and do something else. Not different characters, but like, you know, just because it felt like a good time to sort of be able to yeah. use that bit of purchase that you had to say, well, well look, we, we wanted, we'd written the outline for the episode uh, where they will go on holiday, like, you know, but we could never get it made because it would cost too much money. And we thought, oh, it's a good thing. We should keep that up our sleeve because actually we could do a film about that first holiday in Europe yeah. with your friends. It's kind of, you know, right, so you know, passive rights sort of story that we yeah. could, uh, you know, we could both see. And it might not have even been those characters as well. So that was really it. It was kind of like a sort of selfish desire to make a film and, you know, just to use a bit of the uh, capital that the, sh the show had given us to be able to do that. So we had the film rights and we just said, well, look, I'm sure we can get the funding for it. A bit arrogantly, we were just, <laughs> we thought we would make a film that would be the end of it. It would just be a nice thing to have as a, like a DVD for us, really, <laughs> as an end point. We get to film abroad, and then, you know, that, that would be over. I think, and we didn't think, oh, yeah, we will now go and make a film, and it will be a huge success. So uh, it was a bit like starting over again for us. It wasn't sort yeah. of, it wasn't as cynical as, again, it felt when it came out and started doing really well. That was a huge surprise. I mean, it, it genuinely was to the, even the people involved, you know, the financiers, yeah. and everyone. It was well, nice. it's, no, it's, it's terrific. And I mean, there's a, there's a time limit to the sitcom, isn't there? Unless you do the next generation, their little brothers come up and you start with yeah, them. I mean, because it, you, you couldn't carry on doing exactly what you were doing. So it was the perfect way to, yeah. I mean, the two films to go out by, by taking them slightly into the adult world. But once they've sort of lost their virginity and grown up a little bit, yeah. you sort of, that's, they're no longer in that that in between periods. So. I think that's right. And I think yeah. that we did have in the back of our minds the, you know, still the scars of the twenty eight year old in between us. Yes. Where they're all slightly, you know, unwoke. Let's yeah. say, you know, and it kind of like it did, you know, we we sort of knew that there was a period and they were getting older. Let's but you know. Yeah. He's that's not mince our words. I mean he looks, looks great. Good. He's literally you know, he's he's is the last one standing, isn't he? I mean, everyone else has aged terribly. <laughs> they're, 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 um, I'm, I'm still able to be seen in public, the others. <laughs> just kept in sort of... Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, I think there was that. And it seems weird. I mean, you, what would happen is, I think when we end up doing a... So, the, so the, you know, the first film went very well and then everyone was like, you're going to do a sequel. And we were kind of like, no, I think we've done it. I feel like that's it. We left it there. And we would tell everyone, oh, no, we, you know, that's it at the end. And then... You just about two, you know, I think it was about two years between before we started production on the next film. Yeah. And that genuinely was a moment where you used to get people and a lot of cab drivers stopping you and saying, oh, I love that film. When, when's the next one coming out? You go, I'm not doing the next one. And they'd say, why not? Everyone loves it. Like, and and, and you'd, be, uh, you'd be like, what, you don't get paid well for it? I go, no, we would get paid really well for it. And they'd be like, do you not like working with the boys? And we'd like, no, we love working with them. They're great. And they're like, why would you do another one? And then we were suddenly like, I don't know, it's stupid, really, isn't it? And <laughs> you realise that you don't own it anymore in a strange way. It's yeah. kind of become a... You know, at that point, it had become something that had become owned by its fans as well. And so we felt like, yeah, we should do a second film, I think, because it just felt like the right thing to do. But even, even at the end of the second film, then we were then getting to the point where you were saying it. It's yeah. just, you know... But do you think... I mean, I'm, I'm sure you are asked all the time about getting it back together and seeing them now in their 30s or late twenties or whatever. Do you think there's anything in that? Or do you, I mean, will it happen? Do you think eventually will you crack and do it? Or do you think it's best to 
leave it behind? I think it's best to leave it alone. And I think a good example of that is the special we did recently that went out just for the 10th anniversary. And it was just some clips and interviews. And basically, if you like the in-betweeners, you'll see the Carls, Jimmy Carls doing some jokes. <laughs> and the reaction to that from some quarters online was, why is this not a new episode? This is, this is like pissing on the legacy of the show. And, and, I, was, I, and I kind of thought, well, I mean... You know, maybe you know, maybe there's nothing you can do really, because I was thinking this isn't pissing on the legacy. I was like, if you want to see some 30-year-old in between us and us <laughs> doing like a stag do or a lame thing, <laughs> phoning it in and doing it for the money, that would be pissing on the legacy. And uh, mm. and you sort of think, I don't know, I don't know how you keep what was brilliant about it alive without it becoming. I think it's exactly that because I think if those can if they change, no one's going to like yeah, them. Yeah. Yeah. If they don't change, no one's going to like them because <laughs> yeah. you only like them because they're stupid kids. I think you know, and, and that yeah. can stretch, you know, as in as it does in the real world. Now that can stretch into mid twenties maybe, but I think yeah. beyond that, it's. I think we're beyond the. Uh, yeah. Cut off now. But you still you work together on festival. Uh, yeah, we, yeah. So. I mean, we love working together. I mean, like it, in lots of other contexts, we've we've worked. I mean, obviously, like Damon. Um, wrote White Gold, which I've done with Thanks, James Bussie. Buckley. Um, I've done other stuff with Simon Bird. We've written stuff together. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, on a practical level, I haven't really got that many other points of contact just in the world in general. <laughs> so, um, but, so, but, yeah, I think the... Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. When it, it works because they are profane and they're full of bravura and they're young and therefore it's okay but i think you yeah i'm not quite sure how you it would need to be it would need to be a different thing it they're not radiohead are they they're not going to evolve <laughs> in a really <laughs> interesting not, no, well, way it's sort of, yeah. it, i don't know it, it, there's something so perfect about it and maybe it's partly accidental maybe it's not and maybe yeah. it nearly went another way and then it didn't but it's just capturing that i think that's that's you've captured the sort of hearts of all the viewers because they have been through that, and it's just, yeah. I mean, it, especially, I mean, I, I know ten year, people say, oh, 10 years on, you wouldn't get away with doing those things. And as you said backstage, well, of course we would, because it's still being shown. Yeah, and, you know, people yeah. will still watch it. And yeah. you do, you'd get away with it, because even if things changed significantly, because the, the, they're meant to be idiots. Yeah. Nothing, you're not meant to be going, hey, the, that stupid thing he's doing is brilliant. You're meant to be thinking that guy is a dick, you know, yeah. but a lovable dick. That's all, like, my favourite yeah. comedies, really, yeah. are about sort of, you know, flaws, like flaws in humanity, yeah. you know. That's why we love Partridge, isn't it? You don't go, oh, I, you know, if I'm going to... I like Partridge, so I'm going to adopt some of his views. <laughs> it's not like... Yeah. So when, like, you know, that thing about, oh, you could never do that today, you're sort of like, well, you could... People understand that about comedy. It's not like that hasn't been lost at all, so... I mean, some people don't understand that about comedy. No. But we don't, I think we no. can ignore them. Uh, so <laughs> some people don't understand comedy is the, is the truth of it, and that's... Uh, the, what I find funny about though, those people that do complain about comedy, and sometimes comedy does need to be complained about, and it's not above the law, but I just think 20, 30 years ago, it's the people who would write into the BBC or Mary Whitehouse, and you'd and people would basically just laugh at the letters and pretend to apologise. Mm. Yeah. And now because yeah. of social media, it's sort of almost just, you know, oh, yeah, let's get behind them. So it's kind of crazy. But it isn't. It isn't, a big it isn't a big deal to comedy. People, if you're doing good comedy, you're still able... There's no question of freedom of speech stopping you doing No, I think it's often about laziness when people are complaining yeah. about not being able to say something. Yeah. I think it's the, if you're going for some sort of shortcut, then maybe you will get pulled up on it. But, I mean, I think if, you're, if the characters are properly worked out and... If the writers haven't been lazy, then I don't think. I think it's. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's exactly. I think a lot of the time it's people going, You're not allowed to say this, and no. It's not, it's it's not allowed not to say it no, in I mean, that crap well, way, yeah. but it isn't funny. As far as I can tell, the world at large at the moment, people are saying all sorts they of are, terrible they things are, every day. I mean, I, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> it's, it's like you can say whatever you want. You know what I mean? It, it, I've heard stuff that I. Never would have thought. <laughs> it's true. Heard, uh, yeah. But, so look, why don't we go over to the audience who may have some oh, yeah. questions? They may have some better questions than me. So we're going to have the uh, the house lights up, and if anyone's got a question, put your hand up, and then a microphone will come to you. You can ask. The, oh, here we go. There's a. Is it Brexit gentleman. related? Can we do? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> do all the Brexit ones first. There's yeah. one second row here. Is there a microphone near? I mean, I might be able to hear you and relay. Have you got a? Are you holding the mic? There's this guy, gentleman here. If you can hand. Oh, there's a staircase. Oh, see, interesting. It? Yeah, it's good. a comedy staircase. Or is Maybe there a staircase? Oh. <laughs> is, it a, is it a mic? It's not... It's no... Uh, it's mic. Oh, there's a mic. Wireless, isn't it? No, it's... Is it wireless? It is wireless. Yeah, get, yeah there you go. Give it yes. to a man to pass yes. it. Oh, Hello, out. sir. Hello, hi. Um, Joe, jo, you've done probably the most embarrassing 
yeah. stunts in, uh, in the yeah. in-between. Uh, was, was that always a conscious decision to have <laughs> Simon's character, because he was based on you, to do the really, really no, I deeply just, embarrassing stuff? No, I think they just realised that I was like a soft touch. <laughs> uh, and um, the others, you know, were not as likely to do it. And I, I think I am a very trusting person. And um, I, did, I did, and I continue to trust Ian and Damon, despite everything. And um, uh, I, I think, yeah, I, I tended to not mind. I don't know why. I can't explain it. But I certainly felt that with like, the, the, the testicle one, for example, oh, like, I, really, I genuinely didn't even really consider it nudity, it, because, it, because, it, because, it, because it wasn't sexy. So I was like, well, that shouldn't be nudity. Because it's of no interest to anyone. <laughs> so, no, I, I, it, I wasn't, really... it wasn't sexy. <laughs> no, so that's what I mean. No, but that's but so I was like, I, I found don't it understand. very sexy. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, yeah. Um... But yeah, I wouldn't know. And also, I think, I mean, everybody was very good at committing to jokes, but I think I, there is something about maybe your DNA. I mean, you you know, you are a real fan of comedy, and, and I think that you appreciate that when people commit and commit to things to make yeah. it, and, and that can lift it and make it funnier. And so it's easier to do it. We would end up writing them for Joe because I think he kind of understood how, you know, he was much more interested in how funny this could be than how bad I might look. I've never really watched joy. something on, on telly or on a film and thought, oh, God, I can't believe he did that. Like, I, I just, I find my own body extremely boring, so I'm just like, well, I just don't care. Like, I, I so... And they've taken full advantage of that. <laughs> so, it's interesting. Yeah. I remember watching Life of Brian when I was a kid and Mass into Monty Python and when Graham Chapman opens the, yeah. Yeah. the, yeah. the door and his yeah. penis is there and yeah. I just think, oh, my God, you know, how could he do that? That's so de terribly embarrassing. Yeah. And then, yeah, the things that I've done <laughs> on TV <laughs> yeah. and yeah. The, the parts of myself that I've shown on TV. Yeah. Really. So yeah. It, also, you're in the character. It's not really... It's not really you. Do you find it that? I, I did a no, new scene yeah, in the play and it never really felt like me. No, it's not. It, there is a, there's a... It's not, it's not on you in a weird yeah, way. It's yeah. kind of, it won't stick to you. Sure. And also, we get a little bit sort of tunnel. You do get a bit tunnel visioned if you're like, you know, show running or you're the creator of the show. And you just think everyone has to appreciate that what you're trying to do is just make it as funny as possible. And you realize, I mean, all the arguments I've had with, you know, like James and uh, Blake about nudity that they wouldn't want to do. And, and at the time, I was just like, Oh, this is really annoying because, like, it would be much easier if it was just your penis, <laughs> and then we have to get a penis double, and it's still going to look like it's your penis at the end of it. Yes. But you don't actually have to do it. You know, there's yeah, like a thing the... that you don't ever put yourself in a position to think. Hey, I don't think actually I would probably stand. The first I film, put my if we hadn't had to spend film. that money on James's fake penis, we could have had like a dinosaur or something. <laughs> The most expensive effect in the film is where we had to sort of drop in. Yeah, uh, a shot of a penis double for James Bailey, and he—I uh, tell you why it was annoying for us because he'd had the script for about eight months and Bob obviously hadn't read it. And then when we were about in rehearsals, he'd get a call from his agent saying, "Oh, he's not going to do the nudity." So we went, "Well, it's a bit late for that because we, like, sh we scheduled it all." And they're like, so we had to come up with a solution, and that was find someone in Mallorca where we filmed who might do it. <laughs> and and it turned out that one of the extras, one of the SAs, was a sort of rep from a hotel who was there for the winter, and she recommended that her son do it. It's the weirdest thing. <laughs> and so he... he you, know, you know whose penis is funny? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My son. So he came along, <laughs> and he did it. But what... <laughs> so we said to James, we'll have a double. So what we did was that we had to basically, like, shoot a plate shot where James is standing there and he's just got his trunks on, and then we shot the exact same shot, but with the penis double in there, Naked, and he gets the thing, and then we had to sort of, you know, composite those together. And so I think James thought it would go, "Here's James." Then there's a shot from behind of the trunks, and it would be like a close-up, and you'd never know it was James. But really, because you can do this digitally, it's just a full-length body shot of James <laughs> with somebody with a much more horrible cock than his. <laughs> Sort of superimposed, <laughs> but nobody knows it's not his. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I, had a I had a little sort of vicious kind of delight in that. Yeah. <laughs> My son's got a horrible cocky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyone else got questions? You can hand that mic back. Uh, oh, there's a question here in the, in the centre of the uh, circle there. Circle. Here we go. The mic's coming across. Very good. Well, good work. Um, is Jay based on an actual person yes <laughs> <Are> <laughs> yeah he is actually like uh, weirdly 
you know, all of them sort of are, and, and some of them are a bit more composite, again, of people, but, that you know, like, you know, a few different traits. But, yeah, there was some of the... It is loosely based on, like uh, Richard was saying, you know, kind of everyone's got a friend, friend like that. But, yeah, what, I had a particular friend like that. I guess where it becomes very close to him is that some of the lines... Like things like your mum is uh, your mum's so good looking she could be a prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> they are like they're verbatim things that a friend of mine said. And what tends to happen is I'm always kind of oh god my friends are going to have a go at me about this. And then certainly I've got one who's a lot who's who's very much like Neil. And he and and he came up to me after he'd watched it or he went he said I think it's brilliant how you've taken some of the details of you know, my life, like you're saying, like, my dad does badminton and that, but you've made the character really stupid. <laughs> like, and, like yeah. someone, like another friend that we you had. Always get and away I was with like, it. oh, yeah. <laughs> so they do end up sort of convincing themselves that it's not them, but, yeah. you know, deep down... Unless they watch this and uh, somewhere down the line. Yeah. They're in here. No, they don't, they don't talk to me anymore, so it's okay. fine. <laughs> uh, anyone else? Uh, is that, yes, there's a gentleman, in a, I think it's a gentleman in a hat. Sorry, I can't proceed properly. Yes. Oh, oh, what me? Uh, what cut car? What? I didn't hear the question. Oh. Oh, that yeah, I'm getting the shit. Oh, I see. Um, you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think so. I, um, <laughs> I think. Well, in that scene, I think there's a sort of logic that it's always the person who was kind of least involved who, like. I had a friend when I was at university and he said he, he always go out with like the bigger boys and they'd like do that thing where they'd like knock on doors and then run away and then he'd be left there <laughs> and then he'd get told off. And I think it is that thing where like the, 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 the canny members of the group will, will sort of stir it up <laughs> and then leave. And then the person who was sort of involved but kind of wasn't doing it mostly but sort of was there, they always get blamed. So, um, yeah, I think, it, yeah, that's, it's one of those... It's one of those kind of laws of the sort of school, I suppose, that that is that again that you'd put alongside, you know, don't do anything different or don't be different in any way, and uh, and uh, that it's always funny to wind people up when they're already at the point where they're about to explode. I mean, in a way, that scene is quite representative of quite a lot of those kind of laws that govern the way that kind of like, well, it's interesting boys talk to each other when they're at school. But what I love yeah. about that scene is that you don't dob Jay in, don't go it's no, him, which no. is really nice for you, but he doesn't go, <laughs> yeah. it was me. He's there yeah. going, oh, and then, oh, you pricks, you know. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, it's just exactly how life is. And it is, and it is, it, it, it's like at the point at which somebody said, right, serious, like, seriously, can you just stop doing that? That's actually the beginning of the process where you start doing it. Like, <laughs> that's not the end. So, um, uh, so yeah, I think there is. It's 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 cruel and unfair, and that's um, that's it. But but it's a kind of junior version of the cruelty and unfairness that is manifested in yeah. the world. So yeah. Uh, we've got a question here. Hi. Um, Hello. It's not really a question. It's oh more God. of um, it's it's a complimenting. Can you hear? Oh, yes, 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 yes. It's more complimenting on a particular episode that I'm a fan of, which is the night out in London when you, <laughs> you're wearing trainers <laughs> and oh, you're yeah. trying to go into a club and you've been turned away. It was almost like when I watched that for the first time, I thought that was like a life lesson if you wear trainers. <laughs> yeah, it is. You, bad things are going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> but, and I thought well, yeah, it was really funny. Oh, thanks. Well, yeah, being incorrectly dressed for a club. Like, when I, in Chelsea, where I'm from, there was a club that everyone used to go to called Zeus and like you had to wear like a button down shirt and like proper trousers. Well, I think what we would have called school trousers um, <laughs> and school shoes. And like once you're in, you could do whatever the fuck, you could vomit everywhere and just piss <laughs> everywhere. Like, but, but as long as you weren't wearing trainers. <laughs> so like, cause that, you know, who do you think you are wearing trainers? Do, do literally anything you want once you're inside, but don't be wearing trainers. Um, and one of the things the boys at my school used to do was um, if they were wearing trainers, they'd, uh, take off, if they're wearing black socks, they take off their black sock and pull it over the trainer <laughs> to create a sort of weird clubby <laughs> flipper. <laughs> and then they'd be like, sorted. And that worked. <laughs> In you come. So the rules are, they make no sense. But you're totally right. And in that episode, someone's like, they're new, you know, they're clean, nice new night trainers. But um, no. 
it's uh, I don't know who's yeah who's come up with those those dress rules, but they're mental. You're right. It's time it was said. It's um, time to do something about that. <laughs> it's time to ban conkers. <laughs> We've probably got one more question, so I can see how well, uh, we might let, do two if we quick. So there's a man behind that pillar. I think it's a gentleman. Hello. Hi. I uh, don't know whether you had anything to do with it. Um, so I was more about your perception or um, the American in between us. Oh. Uh, oh yeah. I was going to bring that yeah. up. Oh yeah. We had a little bit to do with it in. Uh, uh, they paid us some money. To <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. No. What, what, what happened with the American in between us was. It's a kind of, oh God, this is boring about Hollywood, but like, what tends to happen is, over there, there's a huge pressure for people to sort of rewrite things if they're the showrunner on the show. Like, they might get a thing and then go, oh, we'll rewrite some of these episodes. But, and I found out afterwards that like, they will get paid as the chief creative. Like, like right. you know, it, it's all about credit as well. So I think that sometimes some of those things got tinkered. There's a bit of Americanization that went on, and there were sometimes, I think they just got tinkered with for the sake of tinkering with. Yeah, but, yeah. I, I, it's hard someone else trying to inter... Like, there were some things there that we, you know, they, they did that I just thought were so out of character from the character, you know, and some of the things that, you know, we, we were asked about, mainly, you know, kind of just not listened to when we raised anything. And in the end, you just kind of think, well, they've got to get on. They have very good people out there. They know what they're doing. you just got to get, let them get on with it, and that's the system. And they kind of... They do ask you things as a courtesy. Uh, and you can get very lucky with that, which I think, actually, Gervais... And yeah. Steve Merchant did because they had a brilliant team working on the office and did that. And I, you know, I didn't, I, I don't think I, th when I first saw the first few episodes, which were quite faithful to the, the British one, I didn't really sort of feel it was, you know, it was a sort of terrible version. But the reaction to it was obviously quite sort of toxic at the time. Did you watch it? Did you? Oh. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. Uh, <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I don't want to, I mean, I don't want to diss him because the guys who were in it and the other actors, you know, everyone yeah. worked really hard on it and it was good, but I think there was just some, like that can happen. I think it's very yeah, difficult the, translation. The acting was good. I, I just think that it is quite a British show, really. I think celebrating losers doesn't really work in America. I, it, it's just not something they do. Even the average people are very good looking. Apart from in the uh, presidential race, yeah, yeah. Eh? Oh, the no, politics. No, no, no. See, 11 o'clock show, this sort Congress. of stuff. Was, yeah. Did they was show the yeah. you are in between us in America at all? Yeah, they did, but they, oh, this is a, probably more, this is a better story. It, it went on BBC America at the time. So the slot at 3-4 was about 24 minutes long. Their slot was 21 minutes long. So there's two things they did to the show. One, they had to bleep out the swear words, but because it was so sort of, you know, because it was so English, they didn't really know what the value of the swear words were. So there's, cl like, they'll beep out piss and shit, but there's, like, clunge all over the place. <laughs> Wanker, they had no idea. They're like, that's all going out at tea time. The other thing they did that was sort of spectacular on it was they, because to make it shorter, they didn't talk to us about it. They just thought, well, the easiest thing to do is every, like every scene in a comedy, usually in a good comedy, your favourites, they normally end on a joke. Yeah. So there's normally a bit of business. You might have to do a little bit of, you know, storytelling and there's a joke. But you try and go out on a laugh, at least, or an interesting moment. So that's the easiest thing to cut down. So they cut off the end of every scene, the joke. <laughs> so it would just... So they took all the jokes out and they bleeped half the swear words. <laughs> and it literally, like, even at the end, they take off the end scene just to make it fit time. Yeah. So it's a very interesting watch. Have you ever watched it's it? It's a real masterpiece thing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's quite bleak. <laughs> it's it was, yeah, it was a bit more like, you know, who directed the favourite? It was a bit more like watching that. Like, this is a strange way to do it. Let's have, I think there's one more question over here. Some, who was that? Does someone have the hand up over here? If not, we can just... Oh, uh, yes. Can we get a mic here? And this will be the last question you've missed out. Sorry. Hello. Hello. Um, so I heard that there was a, sort of like a new in between us in that it was going to be not the same characters, but like a, some more characters within that universe, within that school. Is that a thing that's happening still? And if it is, what is your involvement going to be in that? This, it's not happening, and I've never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm writing it, I'm doing it. I'm just, I'm just hoping they wouldn't notice, and you've fucking blown it. <laughs> just gonna call it that. Uh, I, Ian might be doing it. it, yeah. Ian <laughs> may have pitched yeah. it, yeah. Yeah, I didn't see no broken foot. He hasn't exactly. broken, he just can't he hold a crutch up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that could be anything. <laughs> it could be. Yeah, I, I think we probably wouldn't. I mean, you know, we're quite... 
we're quite protective of it now because well, we always were. You know, we always, you know, I think you have to be. And I don't, I, I feel it can't, I don't know, it can't go any better. Would you do a cartoon of the Inbetweeners yeah. of, the, of them as babies? Yes, yeah. I would. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately, I'd do that, and uh, and then yeah, yeah, I'd voice probably four of the characters, <laughs> okay. like Seth MacFarlane. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's, that's a good idea. Yeah, we can do that. Well, it's been a fantastic show. I'm, I'm glad that uh, it's gone so well and uh, that you've got to 10 years since you started it. I mean, you know, that would just be the world ending, though, wouldn't it, if it hadn't happened? Joe, <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. so, as we discovered, he had no safety net. That's what... <laughs> I know, thank God, I could be almost anywhere. Yeah, now. exactly. The... It's just good for you and you've got a lovely fiancé. Yeah. It's... When, you, when are you getting married? I, well, we're sort of planning it at the moment, so I'm not entirely okay. sure yet. But okay. yeah, we've got a few, just a few like little a, ideas. I was being like uh, your dad. Come on, when's the wedding? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we got a few thoughts. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's very. I must say, it's. I mean, I, genuinely, I always kind of don't think anyone's going to turn up for this. So it's really brilliant and lovely to see that people still come out to, you know, hear us talk and to watch the film and, you know, ask questions. It's just a treat. And it's Good. very yeah. nice to be asked to do this. And well, it's it doesn't been, happen very often. It's been a delight. Thank we you. are show, screening the... It's the first film after this. Is that correct? Is it film number Do what you want. I don't, know, I don't know which one it is. There's going to be some in between, isn't there? Yeah. I mean, they're all the, it is the first they're all the same. Big Lebowski's uh, really good. <laughs> Just some blokes getting their yeah, dicks bus bombers, or whatever it is. <laughs> uh, please give it up for Dame Beasley and Joe Thomas, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. And stay and watch the film or get a ticket, I think. But uh, thank you. Well done, guys.